This is Night Force Action Report for Tuesday, July 9th, 2013. Coming at you live on Twitch TV slash Horrible Night. I am your host, Justin Lacey. Joining me this evening, Ethan Moses. Good evening, everybody. That's very inclusive of you. That's very nice. Uh, yeah, we're, we're exclusion or ex- exclusivity. Wait, inclusive? I don't think exclu- exclusivity even exclusivity exists anymore. Work? Yes, we want everyone exclusive welcome. inclusions. <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> this is a video game podcast from HorribleNight.com, uh, where we get caught up in the games we've been playing and uh, make some game pitches before the night is out. Uh, but first, uh, what were you up to this weekend, Ethan? Oh man, quite the quite the weekend actually. Had some good stories, some good things to talk about. Um, so I've been trying to be a lot more active lately because the sun's out, and in Germany sometimes the sun doesn't come out. So when it's out, you go out and you enjoy it. And so I went on a picnic this weekend with some friends. Okay. Uh, ended up drinking way too much, um, and we happened to have an American style football with us. And uh, you know, in my you know in my inebriated stupor. I uh, saw a bunch of little kids playing around, you know, within the within the you know in the watchful eyes of their parents, and they they had a flat basketball. And in my mind, I thought, you know, this isn't right. This isn't cool. So I uh, kicked the American football towards them. Uh-huh. And it rolled, and they picked it up, and they seemed pretty excited. Um, and then I ended up teaching them how to play American football, American style football, uh, not that soccer bullshit, because no one watches that, uh, <laughs> especially and, in Europe. And, yeah, I was in the, yeah, no, I think Finland. My, yeah, my buddy from Finland said they love it in Finland, but that's about all. Oh, that's um, that sounds about right. So I, I felt like I really like you know my big thing is I like kids. Uh, I want to I want to impact kids. I want I want to be a good example. And I really thought I, you know I, I uh, me- metaphorically speaking touched these children, um, <laughs> and um, <laughs> they ended up chasing me away with sticks <laughs> and like a. <laughs> Like in a very friendly way, like they thought they were having like fun with it. I guess that's like a European thing. I don't know. I haven't been here too long, but yeah. By, by the end of it, they were excited. It wasn't like it was a violent thing, and their parents were laughing. Did it, it happen suddenly? Fun. Like your <laughs> story just, just escalated. Yeah. So yeah, it it did. It went really well. Like I felt like it was one of those. You know, is that how they show appreciation uh, for new ideas? I guess so. I don't know. You know, I thought it was a. Uh, I thought it was like you know, kind of one of those Forrest Gump moments, like one of those really touching moments, like little feather floats down, and everyone's like, "Oh man, this is it! This is what the world needs is American <laughs> football." No, they just wanted to, they just chased me away with sticks. You know what uh, this game was, needs? It's more sticks. <laughs> yeah, it, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, or, or uh, actually, I, up, I mean, uh, no offense, but like, so you said they were playing with a basketball. That's an American sport. You gave them well, a. It was fl- a fl- but it was a flat basketball. That's fine. That's that fine. Is not an American sport. <laughs> <laughs> flat basketball is the worst I'm, sport. People I'm just saying they're they're going with. They have an American basketball. I don't know if there's a, another version. They have a basketball. You give them an American football, and obviously they're responding by trying to play baseball with you. They yeah. just didn't fully <laughs> understand it. So there was there was there was a lot of confusion there. Um, but I ended flat up giving them the basketball. <laughs> well, they, well, <laughs> Thanks, Chad. Basketball's in. That's it. But it, no, it ended up working out well. I gave them the football. Uh, they were really appreciative of that after they put down the sticks. Um, and they tried <laughs> to offer me the flat basketball in exchange. I was like, don't you worry about it, kids. We're, <laughs> we're okay here. This is this deal is closed. So, yeah, I felt like, you know, I, I did my good deed for the month. So, uh, Aubrey wasn't happy that it was her football. But, uh, you know, that happens. Now we can lock you away so you just play video games for a month. Yeah, exactly. I don't have to go out anymore. Yeah, because today I had another big experience. I went to a nude beach. <clears throat> on purpose. I wasn't nude. Okay. I was not nude. Um, I went to a normal beach and then stumbled across a nude beach. And I've just got to say, my mind has changed about nude beaches. Um, not for me, definitely. But man, you know what? What? You got to respect those people. Okay. <laughs> you, know, you know, it was hot. They're getting. They have to lotion up everywhere. Yes. You know, like the, the conventional uh, gentleman only has to, you know. Uh, deal with his top and, and some parts of his bottom, but these yeah. these they were dealing with like the whole, you know, the whole spectrum of uh, flesh. Yeah, uh, I think and, that'd be the most um, uncomfortable part is having to lotion up your nether regions in public. Yeah, um, and just because, like drawing more attention to it. And I just don't it's know a thin what, line. Yeah, it's a <laughs> yeah. thin line between health and safety. <laughs> And, and pleasure. I was gonna say, a bunch of naked people around you. You know what there, I mean? There are nude cops waiting to arrest you for <laughs> masturbation if you <laughs> go on a little bit too long. It's got, there's got to be like a, there's got to be some time limit to it. That they're like, ah, 
<laughs> like, <laughs> like a lifeguard blows the whistle and they're like, excuse me, sir, you're lingering. No, they have a flag for it. They just, they, just, they just throw the... They throw a sock at them, and that's the that's the universal <laughs> flag for public masturbation. You stop that! They just swat at him. Yeah, so no, it was interesting. But you know, hey, man, uh, Europeans um, they're not afraid of their bodies. That's cool. That's, that's cool. cool. We should teach everybody that. I mean, to to a limit within within good. You know, there's a there's a level of good taste that we have to maintain. But uh, yeah, man. So absolutely. How how long do you before you hang out at a nude beach, clothed? Do you feel like you're the awkward one? I was passing by, and I was doing okay. my best not to make eye contact with anything, like even eyes. So, I wasn't even looking at eyes. I was gonna say I you're not like, oh, you're not allowed to look at the people unless you're joining in. Is that one of the rules? Yeah, yeah. Because as soon as you make eye contact with genitalia, it's kind of a rule. Uh, they kind of do this little like thing with their like motion with their head, like all right, <laughs> it's your turn. Take your pants off now. <laughs> you, you know you're with us now, right? And it was like, ah, oh, don't make this weird. Don't make this I, weird. I was just looking for an ice cream cone. <laughs> That's what I was, and I found one, but it wasn't exactly the ice cream cone that I I, I necessarily you know enjoy. But uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, that was interesting. Hey, man. Do as the Romans do, I guess, except not like like draw the line. So, um, but I am eyeballing a speedo. Uh, that, everyone, brought, do you really want to use that phrase right now? Yeah, I guess that is true. <laughs> <laughs> Out of context, yeah, <laughs> or in context, even sounds bad. So, yeah, interesting weekend. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Justin? Uh, not as many adventures, but um, I uh, got caught up on the most recent half season of Breaking Bad. Have you watched that show at all? I know I've talked about it a few times. I but... have. I watched the first season. Okay. So way behind. So Find it is. It. Man, it is not a. It is not a happy show. And at this point, it's not a happy show. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 fun to take a step back and you look at the, the overall, arc of the character of Walter Walter White. But at mm-hmm. this point, like, I kind of hit this. Uh, I think I've said this before too, but I've hit this point with this show, much like, um, the show The Weeds. Where I don't like any of the characters on the show because they're all terrible, terrible people. <laughs> and yeah. It's like, what am I watching this for? Either they're gonna like succeed and you don't, you're like rooting for the bad guy, or they're gonna die gruesomely. And I don't even know if that's satisfying because you feel bad for yeah. the person that the show started off with. So it's been one of those shows that you know it's so popular. I wonder what every like the majority of fans get out of it because. Um, now I'm just watching it to see it concluded. So it's a, you know, it's a great drama, but I don't know what I'm rooting for anymore. And now it's just kind of like, well, I made it this far. Yeah. I mean, I think like the walking dead is almost where I draw the line in terms of like a show that just keeps getting worse. You know what I mean? And I guess game of Thrones is there too, but breaking bad, it just like, there's not, I mean, when you don't have something to root for, it's just like, like, like I like, and I, I'm a, I'm from the '80s, so I, all I want is a good guy, you know. And, and those are the only shows I watch. But yeah, it was tough to. Uh, I mean, AMC doesn't do happy shows. No. Like all of their shows are depressing, or they like, you know, put a spotlight on these like horrible aspects of humanity. They do it really well. I mean, but geez, Louise, that's a heavy show. AMC, you wouldn't invite AMC to a party, like unless it was just you and like a few other channels, because AMC would bring everyone down. Um, <laughs> They'd be known for that. That's... Cinemax would just show everyone their dick. Or the top of it. What, what else we got? What other show? What other network? Sim- well, CW just brings all the pretty people. They're really yeah. dumb. But but they act really like, yeah, they're just really, like, they don't really associate with anybody. They just kind of roam around. What's well, FX? Back. FX just brings... Uh... <laughs> FX is the the one that kind of like really wants to be like on the edge, but like they they kind of hold themselves back. They, but they're still still like yeah, they they think they're a lot more hardcore, but they're really just dark comedy. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like yeah, no people are laughing sad. at you, but I mean I don't want to mess with you, but yeah, uh, yeah. Spike TV's <laughs> out back, fucking breaking boards and <laughs> drinking beer through bongs and stuff like that. Uh, ABC Family d- doesn't show up because it's not their thing. They're not into it, you know. <laughs> Um, speaking of all those TV TV stations, I wrote a piece last week for Pure Geekery, uh, pure, puregeekery.net, one of our uh, site's friends. Uh, Nicole will show up from time to time writing articles for us, and I did a piece on cor- cutting the cord because uh, um, I finally – I ditched cable about a year ago, mm. and I hadn't really thought much about it, um, but I know a lot of people out there are actually considering doing the same, so I actually – broke down and did the math of 
how much I've saved uh, since since I cut the cord. And really, what it boils down to is, um, I added what let's see. I was already subscribed to Netflix, and I was already I already had Amazon Prime um, for the shipping. Not necessarily the the video stuff was still kind of ramping up. Um, but since then, since I actually cut it, I've subscribed to Hulu, and then I think I I did the math based on. I subscribed to maybe four shows at once on on Amazon, so it's like two or three bucks an episode, mm-hmm. and then um, and maybe rent a couple movies, um, which is another uh, five bucks per. And in the end, I was saving forty seven bucks a month, and the only thing I'm missing uh, again is is live sports, which mm-hmm. I basically wrote off because. If the sporting event actually matters, most of the time I'm watching it with a group of people elsewhere yeah. anyway. So yeah, um, it was kind of interesting to actually like reflect on it because it was more of a I don't know it wasn't a money decision for me. It was just like this. I just you get to that point where you just get fed up with cable and that bill. And I wouldn't I knew yeah. I wasn't watching all the stations I was buying. So um, yeah. even without doing the math, it seemed like the right thing to do. But um, yeah, I, I was gonna say sports are like the big. The only thing that prevented us from cutting, but once we get back, if we ever make it back, um, I, I mean, why? I mean, no one does cable. Cable's old shit. It's like a telephone line, you know? Fuck that. Um, I did want to touch base here before we got going because we originally were going to podcast last night, um, but there was a pretty big um, incident in the gaming industry yesterday that really affected a number of us on horrible night uh, when they, when giant bomb announced that Ryan Davis had passed away. And I, you know, a lot of us, I was just gutted all day. I, I, we had a bunch of stuff planned to go up, but I had no motivation to write. And for those of you that don't know, like when Cole and I started this site, a lot of it was based around uh, what Ryan and Jeff from giant bomb have done for video game coverage and just kind of inspired us for a, a different take on, um, being a little bit more um, genuine and entertaining with the way that we cover our favorite hobby, and I don't know it was just it was a very surreal day. Uh, but without kind of bringing things down, one thing that I think both you and I noticed, um, and I'd be curious on your take because I think all this might have happened after you maybe gone to bed because based on the time zone switch, I'm trying to think mm-hmm. if you heard about it before before then, but. It was really uplifting for the first time in a long time um, to see the internet kind of come together around this and mm-hmm. be overwhelmingly yeah. positive, which I yeah. I can't remember the last time I had seen something like that. Yeah, it, I I don't remember the last time either, and, and we were kind of talking today, and I mean, I think about, and again, I didn't follow Giant Bomb to the degree that you guys did, but I mean, that was like, if you know, if you're going to listen to a podcast, that's the one you listen to, and that's one that I listen to outside of our own, because um, I'm a narcissistic fuck, but, um, you know, the thing about Ryan Davis is, um, and, and Jeff Gerstmann as well, is they don't have fanboys. They have, like, in like people that respect everything that they do. Um, they're not, like, polarizing at all, because they don't need to be. Like, they, they bring, they brought something to um, journalism that... Uh, no one else can do. I mean, I mean, Ryan Davis was uh, in a league of his own, uh, yeah. as is Gersman, as is most of the giant bomb team. And that's kind of the thing that I, you kind of realized yesterday. It was kind of like, that's, a, that's huge. Like very impactful. And in Cole's article, um, hit the nail yeah. on the head because these personalities, I mean, we, we, they're, you know, for the, I mean, we follow them, you know, like I think about like my brother, my brother and me, like mm-hmm. those guys, like, I don't know them. I've never met them, but like those, those are kind of like my, my, you know, invisible friends, you know, and, mm-hmm. and um, the thing with, you know, uh, Jeff passing on is that, you know, that's Ryan. the whole, or Ryan, excuse me, Jeff is alive. Jeff Gersman's alive, everybody, don't worry. Um, it is the whole industry was just like, oh shit. And that, that's, yeah. I've not seen that for a long time. I mean, like I, with our industry, our industry is so indifferent to everything. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, from developers to like guys that cover the financial side to other, you know, other gaming press and to, it was it was just so so genuine and so and and for you know when you're when you're kind of mourning like that to it, it felt weird in that in in Cole's piece kind of centered around the fact that we didn't really know him mm-hmm. but this is a guy that for ten years now was um, that I had spent 
two to three hours or more a, with a week based on all their podcasts and all their videos. Yeah. And um, that was that was pretty incredible. To, like I was trying to figure out why why do I even feel the right to you know feel the way that I do when you know he his family and his friends are so much closer. But it, it, I, we weren't the only ones, and everybody just like that outpouring of. Hilarious moments with him. There was a couple amazing uh, Twitch streams. There was a thank, thanks Ryan stream that played like a YouTube playlist of their favorite Ryan moments, and then the Harmonics team did a whole tribute to him. It was it was a pretty amazing amazing day, and uh, just it was it, it felt good to feel good about the internet in that regard as well. And that's yeah. and a lot of that is because of him because I feel like what they've done is opened opened up a lot of people to um, the. To how games are covered and the personalities behind them. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, that was. And I hope it, for people like me who didn't follow him as much, they see this and they kind of go back and look at that because that's that's kind of an example of what we want the industry to look like, you know. Um, and it's funny that you mentioned uh, my brother and my brother and me because I really was. I was ready to say, you know what, Horrible Night's going to just take the week off because I wasn't feeling creative. I thought maybe you know maybe maybe we can get by with just doing you know, reviews and just analytical game coverage, take the emotion side and personality out of it. But that's, you know, that's not why we're here. Um, mm-hmm. But on my way to work this morning, I like, I downloaded the latest episode of my brother, my brother, me, they recorded before the news got out. So it was just another episode. But if you haven't listened to this week's episode um, yet, it is incredible. It brings back their whole, their entire conversation about whether or not, Kevin McAllister would um, would be found guilty for his crimes in Home Alone. Um, <laughs> it just escalates, and I was in tears laughing at, at this while driving. And uh, yeah. those guys are very much inspired by Ryan. So just kind of that all that that tying all together. Um, if you if you need a good laugh, there those are those are out there, and it it helped me bounce back and uh, was ready to do this show tonight. So. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let's move on to uh, new releases. Um, first of all, the biggest biggest release of the week that I think you and I are equally excited for. <clears throat> dramatic pause is the NCAA football uh, fourteen is out this week. Oh, oh, fuck. <laughs> I know, dude. I, I I wasn't sure which one you were gonna pick. I thought you were gonna pick that one, but then I was like, I don't know if you will. Yeah, I'm so excited to play. <laughs> I can't believe the it's same out. Game that I played for the last 25 years. I'm Ugh. so excited. And I I'm believe I love, I love football. I love college football. I love football. I fucking can't stand sports games. Yeah. Do something different. Don't work on the sweat. You know, like that's like every one of these games. You look at the you look at like the next generation. It's always focused it- around sweat. And texture, like the texture of their body, it's like, dude, which is, this is getting a little bit off. Which is always weird for football games because helmets don't sweat, and helmets don't sweat, but they work on trying to, like, no, but, <laughs> but like, like, like the little bits of sweat that get, you know come down from the, yeah. like, no, nah, it's, oh, it's, or they're, they're that pit, looks, they're pit sweat. <laughs> yeah, that looks it's awesome. Thanks for, thanks for showing me that unusable camera angle that would not yeah. benefit me <laughs> while playing a sports game. Now zoom as far as far out as you can so I can see the action. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there was a. I don't know if they're calling it an expansion or DLC, but basically DLC or a to Civ Five uh, came out this week for PC, um, a Brave New World six-player local or online co-op. Cool. So breathe some new life and into Civ. Uh, looks like Metal Gear Solid: The Legacy Collection um, is out this week. I think it's a PlayStation Three release. All all the Metal Gear games in one package. So nice. I think there was an HD collection only like a year or two years ago. So those people might feel a little bit hosed, but um, yeah, I I still have not played Metal Gear Solid Four. So I've been kind of getting the hankering to go back and play play two. Mm-hmm. But we'll you know I say that with every like re release that comes out. Yeah, I think I could. I kind of want to play that game, but um, those games are a big undertaking. But nice to have them all together. I guess right. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um, Dark for the third week in a row is out. But I think this is just the cons- the console release. The yeah. the PC release got delayed a week, and I think it finally made it out last week. But I heard it's a big, long, boring stealth level. Is the yep. entire game with vampires? With va- with vampires though. I yeah. mean, vampire you know, stealth. You know, zombies are vampires. You throw those in. It doesn't matter what the game is. It'd be fucking awesome. Now, if it was a 
vampire stealth vampire romance game. You might have Ooh. me. Wait, you know what? Here, why the fuck don't they make werewolf games? We're going to talk about this when we talk about Skyrim. Okay. Later. <laughs> so, you, I think you've, yeah, I think you've, you've had a couple werewolf articles there. I think yeah. werewolves honestly got a bad rep recently, like being tied into the vampire craze and more of the romance side of it. Like, I, oh. I we want you and I want werewolf action. Yeah, yeah. Watch or the Teen Wolf and then basketball game. Tell me. I was gonna say, yeah, Teen Wolf really sports good. for the Wii. <laughs> I'm writing that down for our game pitches later. <laughs> Van surfing and guitar. Yeah. Teen Wolf <laughs> mini games. <laughs> Um, the original Metroid's out for the Wii U. I don't think I'll be playing that. Um, <laughs> like, I okay. live stream Super Metroid. Um, also, Star Wars Pinball's finally out for the Wii U. I can't believe that's right. not... I don't know. They, I thought they were releasing a lot more uh, tables for that, um, but they're still doing multi-platform releases, so that's kind of... I hope Zen releases more tables. Um, yeah. And then Guncraft for the PC. I don't know anything about that one, but that was the big PC, nope. PC release, so... Um, that's it for the new releases. Uh, what have you been playing, Ethan? Uh, I, well, and a lot of people join me in chat today, but uh, <laughs> and they know what I'm about to talk about because this is this is my moment of the year right now, um, video game wise. I'm ho- ho- hoping there's other moments that are more exciting than this, but um, I've been playing FTL for quite some time. Mm-hmm. Really addicted to it. Took a break for a while. And tonight I was streaming Sleeping Dogs, and I, I, you know, I was at a point I was just like I wasn't in the mood. I was like, yeah, anybody want to watch FTL? And, yeah, yeah, FTL is great. And people love FTL. It's fun to watch. Fun to see someone fail. Um, and uh, I jumped in. My first fucking run. I beat it on normal. Finally. That was your first run. I saw you start the game. I assumed you. Did first I survive? Run. You you did yes. another. Okay. Every every member of the team that began from the beginning. Um, I, I bought one uh, Zoltan or Zotan or whatever those guys are called, the energy guys. Uh, he died. Um, it was tragic. But he's an alien. Who cares? Yeah, he did. Nah, he, he was. Yeah, he was an energy being. He doesn't have any emotions uh, <laughs> except for you know he did scream in pain at the end of it. That was oh, sad. Uh-huh. But, um, but oh, dude, it was like, like I, I I wasn't feeling it because I got to the lat like the second before last sector. And I was like, I, I just don't feel like I have enough weaponry. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. And I, um, I did pretty fucking well against the rebel ship. And like, mm-hmm. I did way better than I did even on easy. And you get so much more scrap when you play it on easy. I mean, I, I did quite well. The second, because the rebel flagship comes at yeah. you in three different forms. And these forms are I heard depressing it's like, as hell. I was gonna say, I heard it's like one of the most unfair bosses in video games. Like when it, it first is, comes out, it, yeah. it absolutely, it absolutely is. And, um, I, I, the, the first, the first section, uh, I made a mistake. Uh, I wasn't dodging enough missiles, uh, and that wasn't good. And I wasn't aiming for the missile pods uh, because you know you've got four level shields, um, or level four shields. You can you know block most of the lasers coming in. Um, but uh, I, I I stuck with it. Um, the second part of it was the one that did the most damage to me. But then by the end. I killed it, and I and I almost screamed. My wife was in the room. Like, I, I mean, this was really because this is a fucking tough game. Yeah, it's it's also a roguelike, so I mean, it's it's random, you know. And I got a lot of really good drops, and I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking brag about this because I'm not awesome at video games, but this is one of those video games that I said, like I'm gonna beat it on normal. Do we I need have to, to take a break? Oh, do we man. need to cut a highlight reel and do a slow motion finish? Oh. Oh yeah, like it, like I'm I'm I was I was actually watching the highlight before we started because I just wanted to get like I wanted to relive that because it felt real good inside <laughs> my body. Um, and again, I know that sounds totally totally geeky, but I don't fucking care because like no, that's one. What... I'm not a spaceship guy. Like I'm not space guy. I'm like land guy. I'm like you know zombie guy. I'm not space guy. It's boring superheroes ever. But yeah. yes. <laughs> land <laughs> guy. <laughs> I one person not lamer than Aquaman. If you attack us on land, I'll do my best. I'm land guy. <laughs> um, no, but I was space guy tonight, and I felt fucking good. And I, oh man, it was I. I mean, I was doing these. Well, I didn't do these things, but I wanted to do these things. But I didn't want to mess up the micro or anything. But I'm so like, it's not even funny. Like how proud I am of that at this point. That is like an accomplishment. Um, well, congratulations. I, I Chat was with me the whole time. I love them. I love every one of them. Is anybody helping you? I know um, we had a new uh, a new fellow in chat that was at least paying attention while we the rest of us were 
um, starting a petition to bring back Josh Lee. They came on, um, Happy Happy Matt came on at a point, mm. uh, and uh, threw out some good tips, uh, but also <laughs> pointed out to me on numerous occasions that um, I didn't have any oxygen going, um, and I was killing myself. Like when I when I was making like I was making mistakes. Like I was in good shape. And anytime something bad happened, it was because of me. And I always do that because I'm not good in the clutch. If if, if you're ever on a sports team with me, um, <laughs> f- fucking don't make me be the guy that has to like you know knock the homer in to bring everybody off. Like that's not gonna happen. <laughs> you know. So uh, yeah. So definitely in chat, chat helped me out. Uh, but I gotta thank my crew. Uh, Justin and Verdian, um, they they made it. They they survived the whole thing. It's first time against I had the whole all odds. Seriously, oh, yeah, betting on, and it had no bet, crew the whole time. So <laughs> betting on me and Verdian. Yeah, I, I don't know why. I just did. I went with it. No offense yeah. to Verdian, but I I drag at least two people down. So. <laughs> but it was a uh, you were a great pilot. You really you really served admirably and uh, yeah. Gotta thank you. My hats off, man. Good I job. no like because I remember. Um, I was watching at the beginning, and things were going bad to start. You were kind of yeah, already yeah. panicking, and I just assumed you had to restart. And I saw on Twitter that you'd reached this monumental moment, and um, I assumed I assumed it was another run. But that's nope. pretty impressive, man. Like that's I no. I don't think you should feel nerdy at all. For I mean, that's what FTL was built for was that one yeah. that one great run. So and it gonna, feels so good. I forget how. <laughs> feels to beat a game that like isn't easy that you can't save that you don't become super powerful after leveling up that much like and again and and we've been playing rogue legacy a lot and so it goes back Mm. to this like the satisfaction of video games and this is why i think my 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 enjoyment of video games has kind of uh been relit is that like now i'm playing games that actually like okay i've kind of done something like i'm not just sitting around like i love skyrim and that kind of stuff don't get me wrong but like i'm actually like i'm like oh shit that took some time that was something to cheer about as opposed to you know in skyrim where i just like just fuck everybody up like there's no no (laughs) trouble at all you know so uh this was this was a magic moment though like i you know but you know i looked over to my wife and i kind of like pointed at her like (laughs) like, this one's for you baby (laughs) and uh uh you know after we we shut the stream down uh when she was like i fucking don't even know what ftl is spaceship i'm going to bed so (laughs) so one of us was really excited about it so uh what Uh, actually what got you playing it again like because this is i would say this is phase two or three for you for yeah because i played it on the stream ftl uh was my uh get into the marathon game i think okay Uh, i think it was the first game i started playing um and your july 4th marathon yeah, and, and it's a good uh, – it's just such a good go-to game because, I mean, you can play it kind of your own pace. Um, and, you know, I, like when chat gets involved. And, I mean, if you lose, it's still kind of fun, you mm. know. So, uh, But, no, it was just kind of, you know, luck of the draw tonight, I guess. So, um, yeah, no. Cool. And I've got to thank the Sleeping Dogs for not holding my interest <laughs> for, this, for this victory. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Square Enix. Yep, yep. What else you got? Um – so last week I got back into Just Cause 2. Um, I think it was last Tuesday, right before the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, man, I think we have been talking about that game since the very first po- like the very first podcast it's... we did. That was one of the games you talked about. We were talking about like just explosion heavy, like goofy fun. And uh, actually, we're talking about two games tonight that we both talked about on that podcast, which is hilarious that we're still playing those games, but. <laughs> Just cause that's what the summer is, gaming's for, man. Oh my god! It, it's yeah, it's like reliving the like getting back and getting back to your roots, and that's what we did. And Just Cause Two was so great. Like if you've not played that game, if you've not bought that game on PC right now, like you're silly because it's been two ninety nine at times. Yeah, and it is such an incredible game. It is, um, uh, you, you know, I I was think I was wondering like, oh, how's it aged? Because I haven't played it for at least two yeah. years, and it it. How does it, it has, age in a in a world now that has Saints Row the Third and Far Cry yeah. Three? It, it the thing about the big difference though is the scale is still you can no one surpassed that yet. Mm. Even Saints Row Three, like that scale was somewhat stunted. I felt like uh, like we were I was flying and, and and I need to cut that highlight, but I was flying. I flew up like thousands <laughs> of feet and you just space. don't have that opportunity. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I was yeah I was in space and I lost. I lost control, but I mean, Saints Row Three is more focused. I feel like because Just Cause Two, you do get to that point where you've oh yeah flown all around the island. You're kind of like, okay, did you ever like, beat I'm the kinda... story to that game? 
No, I haven't. Yeah, even, okay. Oh yeah. man, yeah, I've, I'm like 11 percent in, and that's yeah. not story missions. That was just finding boxes and shit like that. <laughs> but there's so much hilarious stuff that you could do with that game, and the possibility of the multiplayer um, mod yeah. that's coming out that they're working on is what got me back into it because I want to be like on my A game for when that happens because I've seen some <laughs> videos of it. Train it up looks awesome. Like oh yeah, like that that is gonna be even even if it's not Ethan's like, mod trainer. Oh man, dude! Like even if it's not mechanically fun, it'll be hilarious. Like I cannot. Mm. That is one of those games. Like Saints Row Three is one of those games you play with one other person. It's awesome. Like it's mm. hilarious. Crazy shit happens. But just cause two, you you there's kind of like it's such a one of the best sandboxes. I mean, mm. I, I I enjoyed that as a sandbox a little bit more than I did Saints let's, Row Three. I mean, it, it's let's oh both get God. in jets and do a stunt jump and try to shoot each other off each other's jets. Why not? <laughs> like that was like what I forgot about. Like jumping into those helicopters, you actually shoot dudes out of helicopter. Like it's, yeah. I forgot those little bits of it, but um, oh man, holy cow! That game, that game is, is so good. That game so is just good. the right amount of silly. That is like the yeah one of the best pure video games out there. Yeah, um, yeah. even I don't know, like because there's just something there's something that separates it between. I, I, it's funny, like Saints Row is a little bit more serious. Like it's a little bit more grounded mm-hmm. than Just Cause Two, um, mm-hmm. and um, I hope. Like, I, what's I forget what they're working on next? Damn it, um, Avalanche is working on something, but I can't wait to see what they do next gen because that I mean that engine is no joke either. Yeah, I mean for what they do. When did Just Cause Two come out? Oh, oh man, that's probably been four years. Yeah, three four years. They, they teased a screenshot that people thought was going to be a Just Cause. Yeah, sequel, but it turned out not to be. It turned out to be like a steampunk game or something like that. But uh, they're doing. I mean, there's something. Something's happening. Like something's 2009. happening. I'm excited for that. Um, 2009. Shit, man. Yeah. And hold on. Let's see. What else did Avalanche do? Look this up. Well, while they I'm do searching. Snow blind? Hmm? No, it wasn't them. They didn't do Snowblind, did they? No. Let's see here. They well, they did the. What was the smaller? Are they doing the Mad Max game? Yes, that's it. Thank you. You've yeah, figured out for the end. Thank yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, shit. So that'll be fun. And then they did they did Renegade Ops. That was the sorry, I may completely blanked on them, but yeah. So that'll be their next open world game. <laughs> Mad Max. I'm more excited about it now. Yeah. Now now that I was a little bit like, yeah, Matt, Matt Max, I'm not really into it, but I'm, I'm more I excited would be now curious because I don't think either of us really knew or paid attention to Just Cause 1. I kind of want to no. see that shit show. Because um, it, it was a shit show, wasn't it? Right. Like, because I felt like when Just Cause 2 came out, people were almost promoting it as a joke. And then yeah. I realized, no, like, because it's kind of janky and you do all these stunt moves, it's fun. Like, that's yeah. that's the joke, is it yeah. doesn't really matter what else is going on. The game's just fun to play. So that'll yeah. be definitely one of my, my favorites of this gen, for mm-hmm. for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. What else you got? Um, I, I also, and this will be going up sometime this week, but I kind of wanted to talk this and kind of talk about this in a more analytical way. But um, I've been playing a lot of games off of Desura. Uh, a lot of games that people yeah. often see on Steam Greenlight, and my big thing right now is I see a game on Steam Greenlight. If it looks interesting... I go to Destora, and they us- it usually has it. Um, uh, and Survivor Squad was one that looked interesting to me, um, and I did kind of a live um, reflect review today. And again, just you know, impression alone, like it, it seemed like it had some possibility to it. Um, but man, it, it's tough how t- it's really tough to judge these indie games. It mm-hmm. really is because uh, if if these guys uh, or guys and gals had bit more funding yeah uh, a bit more time uh it could have been a cool game but right now it just i, I really didn't enjoy myself and actually verdeen was in chat and, and he and i were kind of just you know throwing you know like back and forth like you know like what's what is it with this and i and i just think that there's this really weird gameplay loop that i've noticed in a lot of indie games um that i think comes from polish it, it is in that you know the game wants to take that next step it wants to be like um, really in depth and have all these mechanics, and they just can't pull it together. And and for me, that's kind of how Survivor Squad was. Um, 
And again, it's a zombie game, so I think it's going to get written off by a lot of people. But again, I, I kind of had hope for it because it was a tactical um, game. So it played a lot like Warhammer 40k uh, Dawn of War 2. So you had kind of a small squad and you're moving around okay. and you could craft weapons and, and that kind of stuff. But it just it got jumbled up a little bit. Um, and I wonder if it, and we double checked so, to make sure it wasn't in beta, but um, was it, it is more action fun. oriented than like say you know, strategy or survival. It it that's for a, a game weird thing. Survivor about it. Like, Squad. <laughs> yeah, like it, like I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be more tactical, more survival, and it isn't. Like it, like you get to these points where you just basically set your guys up. Like I feel like you should be moving in and out of buildings, like kind of being quiet and whatnot. Um, but what it turns out to be is kind of like a low key like tower defense you just kind of set your guys up and masses of zombies come at you and um man i don't know a lot of possibility with it but it just it fell quite short and i'm definitely going to be writing a reflex review on it um but i give you wonder like you know a game like this i believe it was 9.99 I, I that's a tough call because there's a lot of really great games that are coming out for less than that and i mm -hmm. hate to say to any developers look you got to kind of you know, lower your standards a little bit in terms of price, but I mean, I you know, a game like that that isn't that level. I mean, a ten dollar game is still like a high level, and this that's weird. Like in the last few years, that's kind of something that's turned out. Like, and I'm not just talking Steam sales. I mean, some really great indie games have come out at ten bucks, and it's kind of strange to be like, oh, it's a ten dollar game. Like, you know, you should kind of know what you're going to get. But I mean, my standards for ten dollar games have, have grown quite a bit, and unfortunately, this game doesn't quite meet that. You know, so I mean, mm -hmm. I, again, you wonder how to fix that and is it just not a good game or do they need to go back and add some new you know things to it or whatnot but i mean my big thing is just the price point and how do we really dig into that now you know that's a really difficult uh difficult question especially when you're trying to review games yeah um i kind of ran across the the same issues with um with gun monkeys last week yeah. it was that it was kind of only trying to do one thing and it kind of did it okay but it was still 10 bucks and yeah um, also, in a you know, it was an arena combat game. It was a, it's there are tons of other options, and yeah. um, you know it's 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 hard to be overly critical when you know what like what an indie studio is kind of dealing with. But it's also like just to be fair to you know, regardless of price, games you only have a enough you only have a certain amount of time to play games. So only yeah. your time almost becomes more valuable and mm -hmm. kind of making that recommendation of, you know, is this, is this game worth your game time worth giving up other, other games. And a lot of, a mm -hmm. lot of the time that's kind of where my decision starts to hinge. Um, yep. and this, like you said, kind of muddy waters of, of what the actual price value of, of, of these, um, indie games actually are. Yeah. And I think you hit the nail on the head. It is time value at this point now. Like it is like, there's so many games out right now. It's going to be a lot more difficult to compete for you know gamers' attention, and you've got to, you know, you got to come swinging for the fences, or else you're going to get lost in the mix of it. Um, which is great for gamers, but for developers, I feel bad. I really do feel bad for new developers right now because it's hell of a lot of pressure to compete. Yeah, I, it's it's it, and it seems to change every day. Is the other yeah. weird thing. So, yeah. What else have you been playing, Ethan? Um. Well, I think this will kind of transition to us talking. Is, is Killing Floor like that yeah. came back in a huge way? We had a hell of a, a hell of a session last week. Um, so much so that I actually ended up staying up till I think seven o'clock in the morning to play. Um, <laughs> yeah. And again, I was just talking about Just Cause Two, the, the very first episode I ever did on the podcast. You talked about Just Cause Two, and I talked about Killing Floor, and it's just funny that we're back talking about that again. But it only takes me three years to listen to you. Yeah, <laughs> or listen to each other, I guess. That, that that happens with a lot of that happens with a lot of different games. But uh, yeah, we've we've had some real. I've had some really good games with Killing Floor as of late. Um, and we'll talk more about you know what we did. Um, but I mean, I, I've I we played a little bit on the marathon last week, and uh, Ghost and I. Uh, Ghost is one of the the guys that's on the uh, in chat every once in a while, and, and one of my Steam buddies. And uh, we play, and we had some great sessions. And the thing about it is is every team that I've played on um, has been full of polite-ass dudes. 
you know, and, and, and ladies. Um, I didn't know, you know, anyone's gender. I didn't really ask. That wasn't, that wasn't important. What was important was fucking mutants were coming at us. And it was, <laughs> it's really nice. It's really refreshing to play online games and not have a bunch of douchebags playing with you. Like, actually have nice people that actually want to play the game and not be, you know, a jokers the whole time. And, yeah. I mean, we definitely had a, a great game uh, last couple times. But then our session last week, which um, started off bad, but uh, yeah, we... we so, we pulled it together. I mean, we pulled it together. So, yeah, that was my first time ever seriously playing Killing Floor. We had this game kind of starred in our Horrible Nights Out, our local gaming events here in Indy, um, just as a multiplayer game that people um, seem to enjoy. And I would just kind of jump in at the tail end of the game, never went through the setup, never really knew what I was doing. Probably hurt all those games that I joined now that I think about it. But um, <laughs> now, I didn't know what to expect other than, you know, it's a, a co-op wave-based game um even but complete i i guess i thought it was gonna be more like left for dead as far as um having more mission objectives rather than just survive um mm. and then getting to understand the whole so e- you after each wave a merchant opens up somewhere on the map and you want to not control the wave of enemies enough that you can kill them and stay alive but also that you're close enough to that to that merchant to um, swap out your weapons and upgrade things for the next wave, which gets more and more. And uh, it took us it took us at least two or three matches before we really got past wave yeah. two or three. Because and I re- you, you mean Aaron? We struggled. Oh man! But then that last one, we we started doing a little bit better. I think we got to wave three or four, and then some some random people online joined our group group, and uh, at least two of them kind of knew what they were doing and. Yeah. Um, that changed the game entirely. It was it was a little rough with just three of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but Aaron was kind of the MVP, I think, wasn't he? Didn't he? He was the last one alive at one well, point. Well, and I mean, he was the medic. I mean, it's easy for you to feel like the MVP <laughs> when he saves your life all that much. But I, I mean, I was the he MVP saved of the pistols ass out of my life. Right? We did. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he was he 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 kept it like I was ready. I was dying so quickly. Him, him finally, tra- him transitioning to actually helping keep us alive kept the game alive long enough for me to find out why people enjoy that game so much. And yeah, and 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 you need like I think those games are great for just um, catching up with old friends and playing games with mm-hmm. people they don't always play games with because it's it's kind of mindless, but at the same time you gotta you gotta work together to keep it going and. Um, before you know it, you're away four or five and things are getting pretty hairy and, and yeah. you're relying on your bros. And that's, that's, that's the fun part of gaming. That's the fun part of Absolutely. playing multiplayer. So, oh man. And, and tripwire keeps that game updated quite a lot. It's amazing that they, it's, I mean, I, it's, it's four years old, five years old. I mean, it, it and they, they had still a, have events. Didn't they have like a 4th of July or like a, they have yeah. a summer event going on now? It's like a steampunk theme or a circus theme. Yeah, circus theme. <laughs> um, and yeah, we, we were right into it. So yeah, I mean, it's cool to see um, it's cool to see a company you know do that and, and keep it going. And people are still pretty excited about that game. And I, I definitely, like, I, I keep popping back into it every once in a while. So, um, fuck yeah, man. Fuck yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, I, it was one of those nights where we were looking for a multiplayer game to to play and just oh we haven't played killing floor for a while and it still holds up mm-hmm. and we i don't know why we gravitate to that over left for dead because it, it feels like they would solve the same issue but yeah. killing floor just seems to click with us i think it's just i really like the monster design in the game i think yeah. they're particularly vicious and i love the headshots and the gore it's just like it's really satisfying um when you are really push back against the wall and surrounded by dudes, but you get those, those couple kills. And then there, I'm a big fan of killing blows or execution moves or just that little extra touch that makes you feel like a badass And it, it builds adrenaline and it builds momentum. And I think, yeah. you know, it, it can be written off as like just silly gore, but I get, I get motivated by it. And I want to like, I was just running around with a knife because it was fun chopping dudes heads off. And that yeah. kept, <laughs> kept me going long enough to um, actually start liking the rest of the game. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, arcade challenge update for me. Uh, last week's game, you're, you may have actually... I don't know how much you played this game, but the Sega game, so this might be more in your real house, wheelhouse. I never played the original Shinobi outside of just random trips to the arcade, and uh, mm. all I remember about Shinobi was is that 
um, you had a special move, and there was it was basically like you'd hit one button, and yeah. your ninja would just bounce all over the screen and kill everything on the screen. I just thought that effect looked awesome. Um, mm-hmm. And then the the mini games that are in between the stages where you're throwing ninja stars in a first person perspective, <laughs> and and the ninjas jumping out at you. I just thought those were like the most amazing graphics ever. Um, yeah. So we we are continuing our weekly arcade challenges at the office and um shinobi was a big hit last week we've been playing a lot of shooters and this was like the most the closest we've come to actually like a platformer type of game but i i wanted mm-hmm. some action and so it came down between uh picking shinobi and picking bad dudes and when i played them back to back i don't remember which came out first but shinobi is by far the better bad dudes of mm. because like bad dudes kind of I feel like it ripped Shinobi off. Um, yeah. And then one thing I did, oh, the other thing I didn't know about the game is that, you know, your character after one hit he dies, and that's kind of yeah. a. Um, it's a it, tough game. Yeah. It is a tough game, and when you play a, a tough game like that for a full week, and you really you start to get good at it, um, you know, I, I appreciate that this is one of the, an, another in the long list of games that has a helicopter as a boss. Um, and <laughs> yeah. you know, Defeat this helicopter by throwing ninja stars at it. It's awesome. Uh, but it was it was one of our bigger hits in a while. Like we've been kind of struggling. Felt like I was kind of scraping the barrel with our arcade game selections. And the this was one of our more widely played games. And um, unfortunately, though, the guy that ended up winning jumped out to a huge lead um, middle in the middle of the week. I tried to give him run run for his money at the end, but um, we um, we always shut the game down at five thirty on Friday. And so I, I ended up doing my best run um, at, during the 5.30 run. So it was one of those moments where we're all kind of gathered around the machine. Am I going to pull it off? But I didn't get anywhere close. Uh, the, the other weird thing in Shinobi is, and I don't know the full history of it, but there is a character in the game that looks like Spider-Man. Mm, and yeah. apparently there's a character in the game that looks like uh, Terminator and maybe Predator. I think um, there's a Hulk as well. Yeah, that sounds right. The, there was just some inter- weird licensing things going on with Sega at the time, and they they had to go back and actually remove the defining features. But you kind of know, like that's not a ninja. That's you know that's a dude in a blue and red <laughs> spandex suit climbing on the walls, and when he dies, he leaves a spider web. Like, <laughs> you know what, Michael? Actually, when Michael Stearns and I were talking a few weeks ago, and I've been editing the interview, he was. He was talking about that. I remember I was trying to think, where did I hear that from? And yeah, he was talking about that that exact thing. It's, it's just like, <laughs> like, let's throw Spider-Man into it. Why not, you know? Uh, so I that was one of my... That's easily my favorite game we've played that I didn't play at all beforehand. So yeah. uh, points, to, points to Sega for Shinobi. So <laughs> here I am in 2013 giving props to Sega for Shinobi. Going back in time. Um, we just started playing Galaxian this week which is my mistake. Um, a new Galaxian was in the Galaga series. I thought it was the sequel to Galaga. Um, it's actually the prequel to Galaga. It was the first game, and it's like super straightforward in that each level is no different than the one before it. So it's just kind of like an advanced version of Space Invaders, but it's super, mm. super technical, and um, you it's definitely, you have to kind of have that, get into that zen moment to get any high scores in this, but... Uh, the guys are actually liking that that one for some reason. I think it's just because there's no mystery to the game. It is just straightforward. Shoot these alien spaceships that are coming at you and survive longer than the the, the next guy. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, we'll probably do Galaga next. But um, it was kind of funny when I looked that up after the fact. I was like, I, I got to like level four and nothing had changed. It just kind of resets the board. I'm like, I thought you know you know Galaga mixes things up. There's like different co- types of stages, and you know you yeah. can get double ships, and and I was like, I, I, you'd think the sequel would have more stuff going on, and then then I actually did my research. So yeah, who's who's in the lead right now in the gaming challenge? Um, for this week, I I had a really good run in Galaxian, but um, okay. I'm actually uh, so what I found, you know, in 12 weeks of doing this, or however long we've been doing this. I'm really, I'm usually slow. Like I, the, I kind of spike at the end of the week. It takes me mm-hmm. like got people pick up games faster than I do, but then I feel like I start to master them towards the end. Um, yeah. Like more thoroughly. Cause I, I don't know. I just, I'm, I kind of analyze the game for like two or three days and then start trying to 
figure out ways to bump up the score, but it's still still a lot of fun. Like I said, if you are in that situation to have a competitive group of guys and you really want to stick with a game, this is this has been a really fun experience. So, cool. Uh, the big game of the weekend for me because I f- <laughs> finally got into it. Um, oh yeah, jeez. So I was waiting around all weekend. I don't remember when the Cube World Alpha went live, but um, if you've been following this at all, Cube World is what are they? They basically described it as Minecraft meets Legend of Zelda. It's like mm-hmm. an RPG Minecraft. I people say Minecraft because of the the blocky nature of the game. This is a a voxel based game, so it looks a, uh, quite a bit different than Minecraft, but. Um, but there's no, so far, there's no, like, mining or construction or building of buildings or anything like that um, mm-hmm. in the world. It's just all exploration, which I love exploration. So that's what kind of drew me in was that promise. But um, so it's being handled by, like, I believe just two developers right now. And they are trying to do, they launched the alpha, very similar to what Minecraft did originally. You know, buy in now, you get... All the updates are free, and we're going to keep adding stuff. Here's where we're headed with it. And it it was a huge hit, I, I guess, when it, when it was uh, when it was released because their, their server went down almost immediately. Um, a few of our guys got in, and um, but I found out after the fact, and the site was just down all weekend. I even had like a little – there was a little uh, website keeping track of whether or not the game was the – ser- the website was up. And the problem was, um, well, we found out later that the site was actually just being attacked. It wasn't people, it wasn't popularity. It was just like literally hackers doing uh, DDoS attacks on, on the site. Well, it went down, the first time it went down, wasn't it because it was popular yeah. and then yeah. they recovered and then, they, which yeah. fucking happens every time a game is popular, some douchebag has yep. to jump on and do something. They're douchebags. So, like 4chan. once it did come up, what would happen is you needed to first create a forums account to re- to be able to get into the store and register the game to your account. So mm-hmm. I managed to like late late Friday night caught it at a time where I could I created my account, but I couldn't buy the game until Sunday night Monday morning at four in the morning. Mm. So um, I played a little bit that night, which was really fun. I was, I was like. On my way to bed, I was obviously up too late anyway, but I was on my way to bed, and I was like, I'll just check the site one more time, and I happened to catch oh, it. Oh, shit. So, um, I believe it's about $20 for the alpha, and then uh, Aaron and I jumped in late last night and, and played some multiplayer, and so I was I've still kind of getting my feet wet, but um, I'm still... Like, right now, I'm just wandering around the world. I think the game is gorgeous looking. I, I dig the, you know, the 3D pixel pixel art type of look that it has going and i'm just an undead warrior exploring the world destroying things and crafting things as i i come across and pick up items and uh, definitely a lot of fun you kind of gotta i felt like we kind of have to hack around it to actually get a multiplayer game going with your friends but once we mm-hmm. figure that out i think it's much better it'll be really fun to play with a small group of people and it's just a really gorgeous looking game and an, an, another interesting kind of indie development story especially because it seems like it's kind of taken off um, yeah. and, and a game to keep an eye out on for sure now is the combat MMO combat or is it no it's all it's, it's it's action based um, okay. I mean it is you're hitting your it's you know so it's more Diablo but it's yeah, okay. It, you can dodge you can move around it's more active that way so um, cool. and like you know, if you miss with your your sword in game, you you miss. It's like so. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. And then we've been wandering around, and there's all these other like, you know, playing single player too. There's all these other adventurers in the in the world, and some of them will attack you, and some of them won't. So it's like they have, you know, friendly bots and not friendly bots, and okay. some of the character designs, some of the creatures are are pretty hilarious looking and like I just keep getting my ass handed to me by beetles and then you know randomly you'll wander around and the game world is you know procedurally generated and so um, you'll just wander around and just come across giant bosses and that kind of stuff and it's more about what's around the next corner and it's got a really neat um, well, at least right now it feels neat a climbing mechanic that you basically there's all these you know mountainous structures around and we 
when right when Aaron jumped in my game, we found like this, this the biggest mountaintop I'd seen yet, and like we're going there. We're just gonna try to get up there, and you can basically jump onto a wall and climb until your stamina uh, um, is emptied, and you just at, at certain points you kind of have to just take a risk to see if I want to diagonally climb up this wall enough to get to that next ledge to recover to try it again, and mm. that that was really intriguing to me just because it was almost like solving a puzzle to climb this mountain. And, yeah. you know, the reward was we got to the top of the mountain and got to look around and then figure, yeah. out, <laughs> figure out a way down. But I don't know. That was, I had had, a, you know, obviously I had a really bad day on Monday. It was just kind of cathartic. It was just, it was, or very therapeutic just to, that game is very peaceful to me. And, mm-hmm. um, I kind of really enjoyed that escape. Yeah. Is it uh, how did how did your computer handle it? Because oh, fine. I, I know you've got a good computer, but I know some people have said I've read that they've kind of struggled a little bit with it in probably lower end computers. But yeah, I haven't curious. had I haven't had any issues. A little it was a little wonky to start the way the launcher um, was transitioning back and forth. Like I kind of had to, you know, flip my monitor on and off, alt tab out of the game until like it, it would come up right. But other than yeah. that, um, I know people had. had I think some earlier versions of the game had issues with it just makes basically doing a big memory dump when you exit the game and that was kind of crashing people's computers but I think they fixed that that issue. So cool. um and it is alpha, you know, it's pro- it's a long ways from being a full release, but um it's fun that you can get out there and play play now and especially um if you've got some friends that are interested in it, I think that's the way to play it. Cool. Cool. Um so Josh and Cole, I forget uh, if I've mentioned this, have both gotten Vitas. And I, while I've been excited and I still think this handheld is sexy as hell, it is one fine piece of hardware, um, and I have been enjoying going back to playing some Castlevania releases recently. Played some Cynthia Knight, played some Dracula X Chronicles. And w- so I have like this good mix of Vita-only games, some you know cross-buy PS3, PSN games, can stream stuff from my PS3, going back through the PSP library and the PlayStation One classics. So I've got like you know half a dozen solid game library built up. Problem with the Vita is has nothing to do with the Vita. It's kind of what I think you already know. I just sitting down to play a handheld game outside of being on the couch or being in the toilet. Like I, if I have an hour to dedicate yeah. to video gaming, <laughs> I'm gonna go to my PC or I'm gonna go to one of my consoles. So. Um, they did. It did not solve that issue. No matter how good looking it is, like I'm playing this during loading screens for things. I'm not. I've yet to really sit down with a long session with the Vita. But, uh, but yeah, look. It, like I said, sexiest screen in the business. So, no surprises there for you, I'm sure. Nope. <laughs> nope. So yeah, so not there on it. I, I mean, you know, I, I I feel like, and now I actually have more of a reason to get a handheld than ever before because I'm you know you ride the U bahn the S bahn of the subways. Uh, uh, here in Germany, and and it's still I can't. I've seen somebody with one, and I just I feel more professional. That sounds bad. I'm not, it sounds like me, me being a dick, but I feel, feel more professional on my iPad, even though I'm not doing anything professional. I'm playing <laughs> Puzzle Quest or something like that. So, uh, but I kind of I kind of like sneer over in those guys' direction. I'm like, oh, whoa, really? You know, I want to keep that at home, losers. But yeah. while we're on the while we're on the handheld, I do have one Animal Crossing story that I think you'll get a kick out of. Uh, I was playing this game um, around July 4th, uh, hanging out with some family, and the kids were out playing playing the yard and whatever. And So I was checking on my town, <clears throat> and my girlfriend's 10-year-old niece, um, she's always interested in whatever games I'm playing. She sits down next to me, and she's like, oh, are you playing Animal Crossing? And come to find out, she's been playing that on the Wii. So we had this big, long conversation. <laughs> and just, it was, you know, it was... It was just like the happiest conversation in the world. I love talking about Animal Crossing with anyone. Yeah. Um, and then I just had that moment where her mom comes over, um, my girlfriend's sister, who uh, we tend to pick fights with each other back and forth anyway. We're both sarcastic assholes that way. Um, <laughs> uh, but she's like, are you playing Animal Crossing? And like, it was just the complete opposite conversation. Like, she's embarrassed to know me. She's like, that is the most annoying game on the planet. Those stupid animal voices. I just can't stand them. Blah. I was like, you can turn the sound down. I do. But it was just one of those, I, I knew there was no way to even have an argument, let alone win it. I was just like, 
I don't, I don't, I don't really care what you think. But I have fun with this silly little game, but it was just one of those, um, almost like feeling like I got caught playing Animal Crossing. So, but then I, then I go to Twitter and I realize lots of grown men are still playing this game. So I feel okay. Oh, there's, I was, I was going to say, I, I, every time I want to kind of give you guys shit for that, there's, I mean, we're all playing, there's a, we all have a secret childish game. You just don't keep it a secret. <laughs> Some of us do. Maybe so. I should. Maybe I should. Uh, no, I, I feel like if I had access to Animal Crossing, I would uh, I would take advantage of that. So don't worry. Sleep well knowing that. <laughs> uh, then finally, more Skyrim streaming this weekend. Um, really, so I got to... I've unlocked the dragons in the world now. I've done the... Just go up to the Greybeards and learn about shouts and start to wander around and did a couple cool quests. But the, the story in my game right now is just... I don't know why I'm putting up with companions. I don't know why I'm putting up with Lydia. No. But every time she gets... I mean, it, it's just been a lot of getting caught in narrow hallways or narrow yes. corridors and not getting them to move around. Um, and every time I'm just completely fed up with her and ready, to, ready for her, her to move on, um, she saves my ass. Because yeah. she's... No, I am I am trying to do a ranger style. So anytime anybody gets close... Um, you know, I can always use her for a meat shield and I, I appreciate that. And then she'll just do some, there'll just be some wonky physics stuff or just like comedic moments. I'm probably going to put, um, a highlight up of her getting, tra- her getting caught in one of the, like a swinging, swinging, like spike door trap. Like she ran into <laughs> it, it like five, like five times. And it was just, it was, it was hilarious because, she got hit by it twice and it knocked down her energy to like where she's kind of collapsed, you know, like uh-huh. on her knees and waiting for you to revive her. And then the door came again and basically just hit her in the face. And I just thought it was, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to keep you around for comedic value now. But, um, oh, geez. so you, yeah. you, you, you advise just get rid of the companions altogether. Um, depending on the class that you play with, uh, if you're a mage, you, you have to have a... I, I don't think you can play that game as a mage without a companion, or you, it's going to take a while. I mean, they do. They act as a meat shield, but they also keep people off you. But as soon as I went stealth, dude, it was like they were in my way, and they they don't get stealth. I mean, they kind of do. They crouch, and then as soon as they see something, they're like, I got him! I got him! And they just fucking <laughs> run out, and they ruin everything. Um, they do. Even the missions where you have to have someone with you like it's like oh like uh, just stay home so i've kept them at home i mean i'm collecting companions still like they live in some of my houses but i'm not you know i'm not super enthusiastic about them as a i mean i'm working on a vampire companion right now oh uh, and she seems cool um don't trust her because she's a vampire but uh you know when i do my stealth missions i you know i don't need any help i, I got that taken care of yeah. so i think and as it's... you get more powerful you don't need them quite as often okay yeah there's that and then like you said playing stealth like they yeah. usually just blow your cover or shoot, well, it, or shoot before you do. That's always my well, favorite. Yeah. And, and, but they do. They are good for being pack mules. I mean, that is a big thing. Like yeah. The big strategy is to clear out uh, a dungeon and then go and get the, the companion and come back and get all the shit, even though half the shit you don't need. I mean, that's, you know, that's one oh. of the things I work with is being like hoarding items that I don't need at all. But, I never uh, thought, I, I, see, I never like a, abuse the fast travel that way for some reason. Like I never, yep, that uh, never even always. occurred to me to like, beat it come back when it's empty and just get all the stuff huh yep, yep. i just i just have that companion with me and give them all the stuff anyway so well i don't suggest doing that because you i i, I think about a hundred hours worth of my gaming is me organizing like my shit my supplies and like getting more <laughs> supplies that i don't need and i have like That's good been... armor and i have all kinds of fucking money but i just i'm man i'm nuts about that like if i ever get any sort of wealth in my life um, I think it's going to be a problem. I think I'm just going to collect shit, and I'm going to be on Net Geo or whatever the fuck uh, that hoarder show is on. It'll it'll be bad. <laughs> it'll be a funny episode, but sad too. Oh, that's the interesting thing about live streaming the game is that it always starts or ends with a big inventory management. Like, yeah, <laughs> I was like, this is this is exciting entertainment right here. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, still, pro- like teetering on the edge of just getting soaked in that game. Like, I could, that could be all I'm playing if there weren't other video games coming out, so. Yep. Um, did you want to say anything else about werewolves? This is your opportunity. Ah, fucking love werewolves. Okay. (laughs) 
<laughs> being werewolf in that game is so awesome. Uh, I, man, it gets me excited to do that in like a. I'd love a. And we can talk more about this in the game development section of this show, but uh, being a werewolf in that game is so fun. I'm a good guy in that game, but as a werewolf, mm. I do bad. I get bad. <laughs> I get real bad. You know what I mean? That's kind of, my, kind of my little treat to myself. Like if I've saved a bunch of children or done something good for nuns or something like that, I'll, I'll turn into werewolf and eat some people. But nobody would be like, oh, I didn't. I had no control. Over <laughs> I I've been I trying. Had, like, to, I've been trying to uh, adopt uh, a child in the game because there's one running around White Run. And she was like, I was like, yeah, I'll adopt you. She's like, well, do you have a house? I was like, well, no, not yet. And yeah. I was like, I, I got a house. And she's like, oh, you don't really have room for me in that small house. And I was like, gosh, I was just like, I'm trying yeah. to do you a favor. Fucking orphans are demanding, dude. <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on to um, some creative updates from Horrible Night. Um, what are you working on? What are you? What are you? What are you playing? What's What's on tap for Ethan? Um. So what I'm working on is again, we've got that. The interview with Michael Stearns that'll be coming up this week. Uh, <laughs> I've had man, I, I, I've just been having a lot of weird computer issues. I'm past the actual hardware issues. I'm just having a lot of software issues, and I had to re-record that uh, interview and mess with the levels. And I mean, it, it's coming. Uh, great, it was a really good interview. Um, and uh, it, but it just, oh, it's been taxing. It's been taxing. So that's coming up. It's still that Oculus Rift video sitting there. Um, you like how I just I'm putting public pressure on, on you now. Huh? I'm putting public pressure on you now. Well, I'm, I I need feel like I need to put it on myself because it may never come out. I mean, just I mean, you know, for anybody that's you know wondered where I've been and if I don't post as much, it's like there's stuff there. It's just like 75 percent done, and it's tough to kind of like step over Fish that edge, you know. So, um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, those focus on those kind of things, and then getting back to like I'm really again indie game wise, I, I really am trying to send emails out to talk to people and playing games that look interesting to me and um, if you guys see any like green light games or new indie games that you uh would like us to try we're pretty open to that yeah. i've been <clears throat> i just out of like i'm not planning this but just like about once a week uh, an indie game that i haven't heard of or that looks interesting will show up um yeah. and i'll do a quick game curious of that and i've been trying to do one of those like I've been trying to do a game curious video at least once a week. Um, yeah. Those have been happening more on Sunday nights, um, but I just kind of I'll live stream it if if it's available. But we've all also started getting we've got a couple more streamers li- lined up. Uh, Aaron uh, is kind of back in the mix here. Coop will be back this week, um, continuing some of their games. Um, I think I'm going to stick with Skyrim for a while for my um, for my go to game, but mixing up the multiplayer games on the other nights. And random indie games. Um, I do. Mm-hmm. I want to try to talk somebody into playing a, The Witcher because that fell off of our ra- radar a little bit. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, need to work that. I did want to give you a little bit of a shout out. I told you this when I was putting the article up, but as far as like, we are trying to get back to focusing on our editorial series, um, the different ones that we have on the site. Um, and you brought back a just five more, five more minutes piece that was just all kinds of retro nostalgia goodness for area 51. And mm-hmm. if you haven't read it yet, Ethan basically paints this picture of the first time he, I think it was the first time he came across area 51 in our, yeah, in yeah. the arcade and picture how what, is this 10 year old Ethan? Uh, ish. Yeah. Okay. Right, ish, yeah. Picture little Ethan. Um, and a very crowded arcade on my arcade slash go-kart place. So, yeah. Um, Playing Area 51, being enthralled with it because he gets to kill aliens, and he's studying up to become, you know, a, a, a great hero, and he's yeah. basically <laughs> taking target practice. And then I just wanted to be around when, when that moment clicked for you. We're like, I'm going to play as both the first and the second player, and basically <laughs> dual wielding his way through Area 51 and drawing a crowd until his fe- plan completely fell apart. So Yeah, it was, oh man. Silly moment, silly moment as a chubby little idiot. Uh, but uh, man, that game—I I forget about that game, dude. I forget about how f- those light gun games felt. Like now, everybody they say like on rails. Sh- like anytime you're trying to like insult like a game, you say, "Oh, it's so on rails, it's so on rails." There was a time that on rails was awesome. Yeah. We love that shit, you yeah. know. So I never, I've never had the dual wielding one. That would be, I would, I would have given you a high five no matter what your performance. God, was, it was so. embarrassing. I just, I fucking stood there like this and looked down. And like lifted my hand. I was like, like I was such a fucking, like, uh, you know, like a, 
there's this this thing going around right now. People are kind of like, I like video games back when people hated me for liking video games. And yeah. The, the fact of the matter that I'm coming to realize is no one hated anybody for just playing video games. They hated people uh, for doing shit like that in the fucking arcade. You know, <laughs> taking the game too seriously. I mean, you could play. We played video games. We had friends in the past. Not in elementary school for me, though, because definitely it was just like you just took it to the extreme. So, uh, you know, if you're one of those out there that think that you're being persecuted for playing video games, uh, take a second and look at the kind of weird shit you do in conjunction to your video games. And you may see that there's a there's a little bit of a thread there that you can kind of work with. So, uh, God, it was oh, my God. I wish I just beat the shit out of myself back then. Like, just fucking... Just I'm glad you didn't, because that. that story was fantastic. And <laughs> I know, I told you, it was very, like, old-school, horrible night. And I hope that we we bring back some more of that. Trying to work on some Absolutely. more creative pieces. I, I mean, I feel like we've actually done a good job lately of being a little bit analytical. Like, a lot more reviews and opinionated pieces. Um, yeah. But we kind of found this site on the... the at the entertaining editorials and uh, look for us yeah. to go, go back to that uh, a bit more. Um, you did try a, a reflex review video. Is that mm-hmm. something you're yeah, going to do more of? going to do a lot more of those. I'm um, probably until I figure out my Adobe premiere issues. Um, Cause I'm having issues going from OBS to premiere, just something weird. Just another one of those things. And, and as you can see, I figured out the webcam issues. So it, it's only a matter of time before okay. I uh, troubleshoot the, the, the premiere one. But yeah, what I think what I'm going to do is probably going to do those reflex reviews live uh, for the time being, usually at times that people aren't around, but uh, you know, it, you know, again, Verdine popped in and that was great. Um, and just, again, like I, I'm really into right now, this idea, of first impressions yeah and like if you don't get me within a half an hour like and and there's no sort of like reach like i think that is a good testament to 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 not reviewing a game fully because to fully review a game you really have to play through you have to finish it or at least have a really like spend a lot of time with it you Mm -hmm. know um, like I haven't finished Skyrim, but I could review Skyrim because I spent a lot of time with it. But um, <laughs> games also, there's also that, and why the reflex reviews are so important, why I like them so much, and why we focus on those so much is that, like, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Why are you excited for this game, or why aren't you excited for this game? And that saves people money. Mm-hmm. You know, that is gonna like, you can look at these reflex reviews and say, look, this isn't gonna be for me, uh, and you can avoid it without having to go through a whole review. And I think that's a really good aid, especially with some of the indie games coming out, giving them uh, a quick uh, either you know praise and saying, go get this now, you need it, or eh, wait on it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's definitely something I want to focus more on. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I, the game curious videos I think have lend lend very well to games I don't know much about, mm-hmm. um, and then you'll see our reflex reviews. Um, video and written um, after we've actually we've spent a, a decent chunk of time with the game, but we've we've got a little bit more background on it. But I I still love the game curious style um, as well, just because that is a true first impression, and I think capturing that, regardless of the um, I don't know purchase purchase decision information that it's giving you, um, mm-hmm. I think those are some of the more entertaining moments in video games. It's just yep. like discovering something awesome or terrible about a game and like witnessing that and uh yeah. so uh that's the other side to um i guess the entertainment side to some of our our, our approaches with the reviews but but every time i do a anything you're kind of the same way every time we do a review video whether it's game curious reflux review or like an all-out one like we continue to play the game a bit more and refine our um refine our opinion so you'll see you know, a 30 minute game curious video and probably hear me wrap up what my initial opinions are, but I, I tend to let that sit for a little bit and then mm-hmm. also write it up in a little bit more in depth. So I try to, we try to give you both the video reaction and then, um, the, the kind of written review so you can mm-hmm. absorb it. However, however you'd like. So, um, yep. I think you can expect a lot more of those. So let us know, um, what's working for you and what's, what's, what's not. Um, on the editorial side, uh, for me, I, I'm still going to probably take a... There was some really interesting stuff in The Last of Us um, in my most recent session with it um, in regards to, you know, this is an apocalyptic scenario where you're going through abandoned towns or, like, sections of the city, and you will come across um, rooms or floors of apartments, and you'll just see, 
you know, all the scattered lives of these people that had to leave this place or died in this place. And you can, especially in this game, just see that the writers for The Last of Us took that into account when they're not, they're not just doing a level design. They are, there's a story, if you investigate, like, the path of debris and almost all of these buildings that really tells some, like, horror, harrowing and, like, heroic tales. You can see that, like, they... They locked this door at the last minute and got out, or they didn't get out. And I'm finding myself just fascinated with the the environments in that game. Yet, yet another mm-hmm. distraction for me for not finishing the game. But um, I'm going to try to take a look at some other moments um, similar to that and and kind of explore that a little bit because um, that really just made me almost like I put down the controller a bit and was just looking at this room and just like like how much time did they think through this this specific house because there was one in one in particular and um it just blew me away and well yeah and that's well i mean just like that's why scott you know bethesda games always like i'm so excited for those is because you go off the beaten path and you pay attention and yeah. something cool is there and i love those little nuggets uh and again left for dead had the you know the writing on the wall and there's you know a few, few little moments there but i mean everything you know you've said about last of us i mean it just i, I, just, I still want to play that game so bad because it seems like just everything that i want i want to give it to you somehow <laughs> so you just can... give it to me <laughs> just give it to me through the net <laughs> i need uh, to just watch someone play it let's uh get out of here with some random game pitches you've you've jotted some stuff down uh do you want to start with uh, a a general pitch and see where we go Okay, so I want, um, you know, again, going back to Skyrim-ish um, uh, conversation, I want a game where you stop bad guys, but you do it in, a, in like, a friendly way. Like, you, like, like, you know, that, you that talk pure, out like, yeah, you just, you know, maybe you're, you know, but not with a weapon, like, a way to kind of manipulate situations to, like, convince people not to do things, you know, so... Instead of committing unlike, this crime, you know, eat yeah, this ice cream like, sandwich. And you kind of get points based on that, or you, yeah, or you give someone like a like a yeah, like a Milky Way, and it's just like, look, you could kill all those kids, or you could have this Milky Way. I mean, look at this. It reminded me of the those lines. It reminded me of the dumb free Doritos Xbox Live Arcade games, but, <laughs> or the Yaris game. This is the Milky Way crime solving game. Well, and, and I mean, where, why I was thinking about this is going back to the my brother, my brother, and me rant about. <laughs> um, uh, home alone yeah. was that you know like because you know kevin McAllister did nice things for these crazy old people they ended up helping him in the end i just yeah. and i just like this idea of like just like just you know off the cuff just helping someone random as shit on the street and ending up actually like being like enacting change in their life and in their motivations and it could be in simple shit not like you know like having a magical you know love beam but like you know literally going up and like hey look i gotta Got half a Snickers. I don't want it. Do you want it? And like literally, that guy is so hungry. He <clears throat> wants to kill somebody. And he's like, "Yeah, fuck yeah, I'd take, I'll take a Snickers. This guy's great. The world's different, you know. And maybe there's a like a super villain who starts out as a normal guy, and you step into his life, and you prevent him from being a super villain. And then he goes on to be like, you know, like a, I don't know, like a clown, a, like like a super lawyer. Yeah, like like a, yeah, like a yeah, like a those all pro bono, you know. Yeah, yeah. so. Like a friendly game. I think we could all use that, you know? I think we could all use that. Me, actually, kind of an interesting... I can see it working with The Sims for some reason. Like, you're actually yeah, yeah, yeah. Sims therapist. You know, you're yeah. basically <laughs> influenced. <laughs> oh, it's like a, a weird architect game. Like, you're based on your performance as a therapist, you're influencing these people to either be terrible or really nice. That is a really good idea. And maybe at the end of it, it's almost like a Walking Dead where you kind of see how these stories play out. Yeah. Oh, shit. That's actually, like, my idea sounded really dumb, but then you kind of put the icing on the, like, the <laughs> like made it a, a little bit more legit. Yeah, let's make that game. Make that, who develops? Someone develops in chat? Develop that game now. Do, we're, do it right now while we move on to something else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so last week we were talking um, about borderlands tiny tina dlc and we immediately drew the line um to red dead undead nightmare and and far cry blood dragon just like Mm. these completely different takes on dlc that have worked really well like Mm -hmm. um all of these seem to be um 
at least critically well, well received. I don't know. I know Undead Nightmare and Blood Dragon sold really well. We don't know yet on Tiny Tina, but um, and just what if DLC took more of a, an approach, an episodic re- approach like that, where like your season pass to Borderlands Two or whatever whatever game um, has more of a um, u- unique style uh, like that. So my idea became: Have you ever seen the movie VHS? Do you know yes. the premise? So the premise of VHS is this is a collection of four or five horror stories that are all, all found footage films that they basically the production of it was they gave it <laughs> I'm to of UHF. Sorry, oh. <laughs> that is completely no, different. That's a that, weird Al, Al, weird Al Yankovic joint. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, I don't the, know VHS. I could actually tie this into that. This would. <laughs> I'll come back to UHF, but VHS collection of horror stories into one movie like five of them so they're short and they gave them to like different directors that had different styles and um so each each movie just felt completely different than the other and it was also kind of low budget approach but my idea was what if you had a game or usually any of these open world games that has an effective setting and an effective game mechanics and you just want that that new skin on it like Mm -hmm. um and so they I don't know. The Borderlands guys get together with a game director from another company, or some, and and they just make you just make the DLC for this game. Go do do whatever you want. Here's your foundation of a game. Yeah. But like, the fact that Borderlands Two, but the the Tiny Tina stuff worked so well and was just told in a completely different manner. Just like mm-hmm. they gave that excuse of no, they're they're playing D and D. She's just telling a story, and here you go. I think that's brilliant, and I think there's. Yeah a lot of other opportunities for that, that I would buy those season passes to know that, you know, Kevin you know, or uh, Ken Levine is influencing this, this DLC pack for uh, Red, Red Dead 2. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I, it just seems like kind of a cool foundation and I like the VHS yeah. movie. So. Well, and, oh man, that would be really like, I want to be, sh- I, I like to be shocked with DLC. Like I love it when they, you know, uh, make, give me more but i like to kind of be like thrown off base a little bit and um you know jumping to the side uh is is nice i like that and just having somebody completely different who doesn't even work in your genre you know mm-hmm. like what if john madden was said hey we need you to make <laughs> the next skyrim expansion <laughs> oh my uhf tyrim was what if what if weird al got to do an episode for grand theft auto 5 oh like a parody episode <laughs> i would you say UHF, I think of his his Rambo scenes and like all his little his Indiana Jones parody, and so Weird Al Yankovic DLC it should be a thing. Oh, that yeah, I would be into that. I may I may even think about purchasing GTA Five. Maybe <laughs> that's the, that. that's what'll push oh, you God. over. Yeah, that's what I need. All right, you see our list here. Which one do you want to go with? Pick one of mine below or one of yours. Uh, well, we should probably go with Teen Wolf mini games because one of mine is literally popcorn, and then in parentheses, it's not really popcorn. So I don't know what you're going to build off of that. Okay. Uh, so, Teen Wolf mini game. <laughs> I mean, Teen Wolf Sports is where it starts. It because you've got your basketball game and you've got your boxing game. Yeah. Oh. Is it one Teen Wolf or is it a bunch of Teen Wolves? I mean, I guess you'd have to feature multiple Teen Wolves because one Teen well, Wolf think- would just win. I think People like the, tutor- the, the tutorial intro levels, you've got to be, oh shit. I mean, the, okay, the premise of all these movies is you can't unleash the wolf. Yeah. And 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 there's got to be some sort of advantage to not turning into the into the wolf, but but it's okay at certain instances. I don't know if you want to get yeah. get that deep, or or it's basically like the tutorial and first few levels are you're the only wolf and you're just dominating the humans, and then the later yeah. levels you actually fight other other team wolves now now what if now uh, people may i mean wolves are cool but what if we introduce some more mythological creatures into it okay. or maybe a teen mummy or like a <laughs> like a teen zombie or like um a teen uh creature from the black lagoon teen kong teen kong <laughs> comes rolling in they all have their own strengths and we i mean because i, I remember wanted- the teen wolf cartoon I- a lot of the times they oh, featured shit. families full of supernatural Other. creatures. I remember there was like wizards and, and yeah. I guess I was picturing it though, if you started off with that you're the only supernatural character, and like I want it to look like a 
you know, the the Connect Sports game, like, look kind of realistic, or not realistic, but like, look like they're taking it seriously, and then you unlock all the silliness. Like, I don't even want to be sold on it. I just want that to be like Easter egg stuff that all of a sudden you're fighting all these creatures because I don't know if it, I feel like if you sell it with with the creatures in mind, it becomes like this much more kiddie game. And I, for some reason, yeah. I want this game to be overly serious. <laughs> And you know, we what what we've done is we keep what Ken Levine comes in and he's going to take the Teen Wolf franchise <laughs> to the next level. <laughs> I don't know what the Ken it's Levine. It's going to be ultra violent, but it's going to have a meaning. Uh, Ken you know, Levine hopefully. Teen Wolf Sports Arena DLC. I don't know what that looks like. <laughs> dystopian oh, dystopian sports games featuring werewolves. Dystopian Teen Wolf, <laughs> Teen Wolf in in the sky. Okay, yeah, let's just drop the sports thing. How, Maybe that can be Ken's next what, project. What kind of games can we get Teen Wolf into? <laughs> uh, Ken, look, you know, Bioshock Infinite, it was great. We loved it. But we got this project for you that you're going to love it. You remember Teen Wolf? Go. And with your name attached to it, we think we can get Michael J. Fox to come back and do the voices. <laughs> Jason Bateman's all over it. It's fine. Like, he's he's already out there doing this. Well, Jason Bateman was Teen Wolf too, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. <laughs> oh, my God. Better question, oh, who should so have been silly. Teen Wolf 3? Who should have been? Um, well, it was Taylor Lautner, wasn't it? In the, in the <laughs> fucking Boo. Twilight movies? Uh, teen Wolf 3, Zav Galifianakis would be a great Teen okay. Wolf. <laughs> More like a middle-aged man wolf. Uh, that, maybe I'd that's what that. we need. Like an actual... See- oh, I would watch the hell out of it. That would be great. They should have tied that, that in with Hangover 3. He becomes a middle-aged wolf. I, I would have felt a lot better about watching Hangover 3 if that would have been the case. Uh, well, I guess maybe Tim Allen, because Tim Allen reprised the role of a uh, Shaggy Dog. So maybe maybe he, you know, like, Tim, are you, like, yeah, you did the Santa is... Claus transformation, you did the Shaggy Dog. What about Teen Wolf? Hangover Wolf. <laughs> Hangover Wolf. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for Night Force Action Report. Chat, thanks for hanging out with us. You can join us every Tuesday night uh, on Twitch TV slash Horrible Night. Um, we post these episodes every Wednesday on HorribleNight.com, and you can subscribe on iTunes. Um, if you like the show, give us a review. Um, give yeah. us a rating. Helps helps us prom- helps promote the show. Helps us keep going. Uh, we appreciate the support ahead of time. Ethan, thanks for hanging out tonight. Uh, yeah. We'll catch you all next time. See ya.